Hey everyone, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Tim Wright here, pastor of Community Grace Lutheran Church, coming to you from the campus of Peoria, Arizona. So glad to have you with us today. And uh, Diane's going to put some pictures up on the screen, and as she does, I want you to ask the question, what do you see? So when we put this up, what do you see? Now just let your eyes sort of change perspective. Um, You might see a duck, or you might see a rabbit. All right, next one. What do you see? All right, maybe you see some birds, and you see a big tree, or do you see a couple animals? Or both. How about this one? Mmm, nice big apple core. Wait a minute. Maybe it's not an apple core. Maybe there are a couple people in that picture. Depends on your perspective. And one more. All right, I love this one. So what do you see? All right, do you see the tree with the water? Do you see the baby? Do you see Batman? No, I don't don't see Batman there, but I see the baby and I see the tree. It all depends on your perspective. What do you see? Well, in John's Gospel, which is in the New Testament, chapter 8, a woman is brought to Jesus who has been accused of being unfaithful to her marital vows. Now, this isn't just an accusation. This isn't just hearsay or rumor. She was caught in the very act, and so she's guilty as charged. And the religious leaders drag her to Jesus because they want to try to trap him. Jesus claims to be a religious leader. And they want to know if Jesus, as a religious leader, as a Jewish rabbi, is going to uphold Jewish law. Now, according to Jewish law, because of what this woman has done, the sentence is execution by stoning. And so these religious leaders want to know if Jesus sees this woman as she really is and will uphold God's law and condemn her. Now when the men look at this woman, what they see, in part, is an object that they can use for their political and religious purposes. They see a woman who has virtually no rights, which is evidenced by the fact that the man isn't brought along with her. They see a woman who's broken the law. They see a woman of grotesque character. They see a woman who has left a stain on the religious community. They see a woman who is worthy only of judgment and death. She is the lowest of the low. Society must be protected from her at all costs. And so, Jesus, what do you say? Now, when Jesus looks at this woman... He sees what those religious leaders see. He sees that she's guilty. He sees that she has broken a relationship. He sees sees that she's broken the law. Maybe when he looks at her, he sees a woman that doesn't have a lot of rights, maybe didn't have a lot of options. Maybe he sees a woman who uh, experienced a brokenness in her relationship and she's acting out of pain. Maybe she sees a woman who is being defiant toward her husband and religious mores and social mores of the day. But when Jesus looks at this woman, he sees not someone who is the object of God's anger. He sees someone who is the object of God's affection. He sees the woman. He sees a child of God. He sees the same woman that those religious leaders see, but he has a different perspective. He sees her through the lens of grace. A couple weeks ago, Glendale, Arizona hosted the Super Bowl, and a pastor buddy of mine took his family down to Scottsdale uh, in the few days prior to the Super Bowl. Uh, There were some NFL activities there, big crowds there, and of course, with big crowds come the street preachers. And these street preachers had their big signs telling people they were going to hell and they were yelling at anyone and everyone who would listen that unless they turned, unless they repented, unless they got their act together, they were going to burn for an eternity in hell. Now for those street preachers, and for far too many people like them, when God looks at us, God sees sinners. God sees people who are worthy of condemnation and death. God sees us as the manure of the earth, the detrius of the earth. And if it weren't for the fact that God holds God's nose and forgives us, 
we'd all be in deep doo-doo, so to speak. When God looks at us, according to these people, God sees us as the objects of his wrath and anger. But that's not what Jesus tells us at all. When Jesus looks at us, yeah, he sees all that stuff in our lives. He sees the brokenness and the pain and the sin. But he has a different perspective. When Jesus looks at us, he sees us through the eyes of love. He sees us in, as people in need of God's grace, in need of God's forgiveness, people who are loved by God. And when he looks at us, he's moved to lean into us with grace, not away from us in disgust. God sees us the way that Jesus sees us because Jesus sees us the way that God does. Here's how Paul says it. God proves his love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You see, when God looks at us, he looks at us through the prism of the cross of Jesus. He sees us with cross eyes. And when God looks at us, it moves him to move toward us with love and compassion and mercy, to embrace us, not to run from us. Paul says it in another letter this way, For our sake God made the one who knew no sin to be sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. And so here's how Martin Luther talks about it. He says, That is the mystery, which is rich in divine grace to sinners, wherein by a wonderful exchange our sins are no longer ours, but Christ's. And the righteousness of Christ, not Christ's, but ours. He has emptied himself of his righteousness that he might clothe us with it and fill us with it. In other words, when God looks at you, he sees Jesus in you. And that can't help but make God smile. There's a poem, I've, I've shared this actually before, uh, about an old violin, and it captures well this, the way that God sees us and the way that God perceives us. It goes like this. It was battered and scarred, and the auctioneer thought it hardly worth his while to waste his time on the old violin, but he held it up with a smile. What am I bid, good people, he cried, who starts the bidding for me? One dollar, one dollar, do I hear two? Two dollars, who makes it three? Three dollars once, three dollars twice, going for three, but no. From the room far back, a gray-bearded man came forward and picked up the bow. Then wiping the dust from the old violin and tightening up the strings, he played a melody pure and sweet, as sweet as an angel sings. The music ceased, and the auctioneer, with a voice that was quiet and low, said, what, am I, what now am I bid for this old violin? As he held it aloft with its bow. One thousand, one thousand, do I hear two? Two thousand, who makes it three? Three thousand once, three thousand twice, going and gone, said he. The people cheered, but some of them cried, We do not quite understand. What's changed its worth? Swift came the reply, the touch of the master's hand. And many a man with a life out of tune and battered and scarred with sin is auctioned cheap to the thoughtless crowd, much like the old violin. A mess of pottage, a glass of wine, a game, and he travels on. He's going once and going twice. He's going and almost gone. But the master comes. And the foolish crowd never can quite understand the worth of a soul and the change that's wrought by the touch of the master's hand. When God looks at you, yeah, he sees the old violin, and some of us violins are older than others. He sees the wear and the tear. He sees the sin. He sees the joys, the sorrows. He sees those times when our lives are out of tune. But when God looks at us, he sees us through the perspective of Jesus, and he sees something else. He sees us through the eyes of grace and love and compassion. He sees us as the objects of his affection. He sees us as his children. And so Jesus has an invitation for you today, an invitation that he made to that woman when he saw her standing there, and the men had condemned her. And he said to her, Go and sin no more. In other words, go and live like a forgiven, loving, caring child of God. And that's what Jesus says to you today. Go and sin no more. Go and live the life of a loved, forgiven child of God.
Peace be with you. Amen. On the night which is betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks. He broke it. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Eat this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink and said, This is my blood. It's been poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Drink this for the remembrance of me. Let's pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you, and for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained minister of the gospel, I declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As you eat that cracker, as you eat that piece of bread, this is the body of Christ given for you. And as you drink the wine or grape juice, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you unto everlasting life. Peace be with you. Amen. Well, thanks so much for joining us for our worship service today, and I uh, hope that uh, it's brought some grace and hope to your life. Uh, if you're watching us for the first time, we want to encourage you to text the word NEW to 623-295-2484, because we're going to send you a card to Starbucks, and that's our way of saying thanks for joining us today. If you'd like for us to pray with you, we can do that. Text the word PRAYER to that same number. And we are quickly moving toward Easter weekend. And if you'd like to know more about what's happening here online and in-house as we get ready for Easter and then move into the summer, you can text the word events to 623-295-2484. That is also the number that you can use to support the mission and ministry of Community of Grace. And if you appreciate us being able to come to your home to share the good news of Jesus with you through this worship service and want to support our mission as we bring grace to the world in a lot of different ways, both locally and internationally, you can text uh, your gift to 623-295-2484. In the message is where you type how much you'd like to give, a dollar amount, and then you hit send uh, to 623-295-2484. You'll notice we've got a QR code right here. You just turn the camera on on your phone. You hold it up. It'll bring you to some prompts that you can fill out, and that's another way that you can give, and you can always learn more about how you can support this ministry on an ongoing basis, boldrecklessgrace.org. That's boldrecklessgrace.org to support the mission and ministry of Community of Grace here in Peoria as we follow Jesus out back into the world again. So again, thank you so much for joining us. Next week, we're going to continue our series. We're in the season of Lent, which means we're making our way to the cross. Our series is Crosswalk, and next week's theme will be Crosswise, Crosswise. And we're going to talk about uh, having the faith of a child. As we do that, we come to you every Saturday night at 5 o'clock on Facebook and YouTube. It's available for you on demand to share with your friends and your family. And then if you'd like to join us ever on campus, we meet at 9 o'clock. And at 10.30, in between the 9 o'clock and the 10.30 service, we have a half hour at 10 o'clock for the kids for Sunday school. And uh, then right after the second service, we have our youth for middle school and high school. And uh, again, all kinds of things happening all throughout the week. BoldRecklessGrace.org. That's BoldRecklessGrace.org. And so now as you go, may our loving Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face smile upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord always turn his face toward you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a great week. Go bold and live grace.
be quiet. We shout at you.